Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for our Teamfight Tactics. Well, we have a new patch out, finally, after a long time on that long V patch. And so this footage is taken from the first night of that new patch. This is a normal game, and alongside me is JDP El Grillo and Phoenix Soulblade, a name that I hadn't seen in a while, but was joining us just to test out some of these normal games. So we are not playing double up, we are not in a ranked game. We are here to try and test out some of the changes that have taken place on this patch. This was actually a lot of fun, having a number of us online just messing around, experimenting with different things, and we were all on voice chat together. So I have to mute the sound so that you don't hear our original voice chat and have two people talking at the same time, which would be very confusing. Well, the goal of this patch was not to create balance. The developers might have said that, but we know enough about the TFT development team by now to know that they were not trying to balance this patch. What they were trying to do is just shuffle the meta as much as possible because we've been in the same patch for, I think it was five weeks, which is an exceptionally long time in TFT. Their goal was just to scramble things as much as possible. So unsurprisingly, they did not try to balance the team comps that have been strong before. Uh, they just tried to kill off every team comp that had previously been strong. So that means that the vertical brawlers with Jax, very dead. They were extremely heavily nerfed. That means that Yumi is deader than dead. Mascots, mascot reroll with supers and uh, and uh, was it mascots and uh, supers is just extremely dead at this point in time. Not really playable. I guess maybe if it's totally uncontested, but they nerfed Yumi. They nerfed Yumi's augments. They nerfed the mascot trait. They nerfed supers. They nerfed all the units that make up that team. They nerfed Galio in three different ways. It's just it's very dead. So. In its place, new buffs, new things that are popular. In particular, what has emerged in the day or two since this patch came out, as I'm recording this right now, is Mech Set is very overpowered. They uh, buffed Set in multiple different ways. Again, this is what the TFT development team does. They do this deliberately. They have said that they don't, but they are lying. Uh, uh, what they do is instead of um, like buffing one thing on set, they buff four things simultaneously and make him overpowered. All right. Anyway, so we'll get back to that in a minute. We do have an augment to pick. I am going to go ahead and pick the Blitzcrank carry augment. I did a video previously with this one, but it basically turns Blitzcrank into a very, very sturdy tank when uh, it creates this. Uh, it causes the duration of his ability to increase for two seconds whenever he is focused by enemy units. For each enemy unit targeting him, the duration of his ability is increased by two seconds. And Blitzcrank's ability is that he gets damage reduction while his uh, ability is in place. So he's two-starred right now. Two-star, he has 60% damage reduction. Normally it lasts for four seconds, but uh, you know if he has three units targeting him with this uh, carry augment, Instead of four seconds, it'll last for 10 seconds. That actually makes a pretty big difference. Uh, the other nice thing about this is it gives you a Gargoyle Stone Plate. I don't really think it should do that. But yeah, you get a Gargoyle Stone Plate and a Blitzcrank. So like I already had the Sunfire Cape. Now I have Blitzcrank with Gargoyle Stone Plate and a Sunfire Cape. So my goal is just to try to win streak off of this for the early game. And if I have to move out of the Blitzcrank, if I'm lucky, maybe I'll three-star Blitzcrank, as I did in that double-up game that I put on YouTube a while back. If I'm not so lucky, then, hey, I can always sell the Blitzcrank and move these items to someone else later on. But I basically just won that round because they could not that, that team couldn't damage the Blitzcrank at all. And I've also randomed my way into a two-star Gangplank for some reason. So I wasn't sure what I was going to play. I was hoping the game would give me some direction. But now I actually do have direction, and that's because I was able to find a... Uh, I was able to find that Renekton. I had a Senna that dropped from an early minion round. And so now I was like, okay, this is going to be a laser core game. And so that's going to be the focus of this is testing out laser core. Laser core, the trait got buffed and some of the laser core units also ended up getting buffed. Laser core was the dominant uh, tr uh, trait in the initial release version of set eight. And we were on that patch for seven days. And then we got a B patch that led to the Yumi and Jax meta that lasted for over a month. So uh, Laser Core, very briefly popular, but mm, has been somewhat out of the meta in this long patch that we were on. But uh, it's actually quite strong. It's back to being a strong option. For whatever reason, Zed got buffed on this patch. It's not clear why. He was doing pretty well already, but Zed got buffed. Vayne also got buffed. So you can play a, a Laser Core trait that play, or Laser Core team that runs six Laser Core and plays into Zed. And so I decided that's what I would end up doing in this game. So I'll just be looking to do that. 
All right, so I'm just gonna grab laser core units. I've been able to find a Yasuo here. I'm gonna put my AD items on Senna and Senna will be my temporary item holder for Zed. So I'm gonna build items that are a little bit weird for Senna in the hopes that I can turn them into Zed items later on. And then I've also got this Gangplank two star that I just kind of randomly have on my board. But uh, I'd like to put that in on level up because that'll put the duelist trait in play for Yasuo. And uh, I don't want to play it right now, just because I want to have a uh, laser core in on my board. Anyway, so in this game with me are Grillo and Phoenix. Phoenix has played very little of this set, so you know she is not probably going to put together boards quite as optimized as what Grillo and I have done, because I probably played like 50 games, and as I said, Phoenix has not played much. But uh, Phoenix was looking to play through, I think, Talon. I think this is the first time I have hit... Uh, I don't think I've hit Grillo yet so far in this game. But uh, we were all hoping that we would all do well and hoping we could all maybe try to top four this. Also, Grillo's chatting with one of the other players who said, you get support Aquins more than carry. That is definitely not true. It's just straight 50% chance for either of the two. Uh, the way that the, so I, I guess I can take a minute to explain kind of how the augments work. The TFT developers have not given us any information about how the augments get selected, but people have played enough games that they've kind of cracked the code on uh, how it works. Basically, the game first looks to see what traits you have in. So it starts by looking at the traits you're running. Then after that, it goes to the cost tier. So when you like, so for the initial uh, champion augment that we had, uh, you can get either one or two or three cost units. And I believe that it selected one cost units this time because we all, I believe, have one cost champion augment. So uh, the first augment is untailored. I guess I should back up and say that first champion, if it's the first augment, it's completely untailored. It's not connected to your board at all. But for the second and third uh, champion augments, when they pop up, which we obviously won't have in this game, it first looks at what traits you're running and then it selects a cost level. And then after that, it will uh, roll the champions that fit those parameters. And then whether it's support or carry is just completely random. It's just a straight 50-50. So right now, if we were to have another champion augment on stage three, it would first look to try to find laser core, brawler, and duelist units. It would just randomly pick from between them. And then it would try to select them at whatever cost tier it is. So if it was like a three cost unit, uh, I could get like a Neela augment because I have the duelist trait. Or I could get like a Senna augment, but uh, I wouldn't get like a, a one cost. I wouldn't get like an Ash augment because it would be a three cost. Anyway, we're getting into hypotheticals here. We should probably stick a little bit closer with what's actually going on in this game. So I went ahead and put the Gangplank in just a random two star, makes the Duelist straight together with Yasuo. And I'm actually getting a lot of Gangplanks, but I don't want to reroll Gangplank. He's going to come out of this board later on. He is just in there for the Duelist straight. And uh, eventually I'll maintain Duelist Trait. He'll come out and I'll maintain Duelist Trait by finding Zed, hoping I can find Zed sooner rather than later on this board. I'm basically just playing through the fact that Blitzcrank is super tanky. I don't really have much damage on my board right now, but I would really like to win this last round. Anytime you win the first four rounds, you really want to win that fifth round so that you can keep that win streak going. I still have not seen Grillo yet, and I do not hit him, and that's good news. I'm hitting someone who's only level four. And actually, they're only playing three units, so I guess that they're just deliberately lost streaking here. Okay. And they also have, like, four items on their bench, so yeah. They have the Renekton... I think that's the Renekton support augment? Or is that the Renekton carry augment? I wasn't able to see very well. But I don't know what that person's doing. Their board does not seem to make a whole lot of sense to, from what I can see. Not really sure what they're... I guess that they're just deliberately lost streaking. But uh, even if you're deliberately lost streaking, you should probably make at least some of the items so that you don't, you know, take a 5-0 loss like that person just did there. Oh, anyway. All right, well, we've got a minion round here. So I've got a minute. Let's cover the actual laser core trait that is the focus of this video because we're going to be playing pretty heavily into the laser core trait. It's a very unusual trait. Uh, this is one of the ones created for set 8 that's not at all like any other trait they've created before. It basically gives you these drones. I'll read the official description. When a laser core agent attacks or is hit by an attack, so attacks or is hit by an attack, their combat drone has a 50% chance to deal magic damage to the agent's target. It's on a half second cooldown, 0.5 second cooldown. When a laser core's agent dies, their drone is reassigned to the nearest living agent. So all your laser core units get drones when they attack or when they are hit by an attack. There's 50% odds that the drone will fire. 
and that is a half second cooldown. Now, basically, people have run the math and looked at this in more detail, and it turns out that unless you just have like an insane amount of attack speed, which none of the laser core units really have that much attack speed, unless you have some crazy amount of attack speed, it almost always triggers more often by getting hit as opposed to attacking. It's not to say that you can never trigger it by attacking. Like Senna is probably going to trigger the drone most of the time by attacking. But more often than not, you're going to trigger the... Uh, more often than not, you're going to trigger the laser core drone by getting attacked. So this is really a trait that works better if you're going to play very, very tanky on your board. It's generally the way that this works. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and just level, and I'm going to toss in the Draven to try to maintain my win streak. And as it turns out, I'm actually up against Grillo this round. Now, Grillo stayed at level 5. We were actually talking about this during the round. Grillo said, I'm, I decided to stay at 5 because I thought even if I hit your board, that I would probably still lose. And I was like, okay, yeah, I think that I beat Grillo's board, but it is pretty close. Uh, he has that Shield Breaker item, and I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't really have a good feel for that Shield Breaker item. But, like, you can see this is a very close fight between the two of us. I was like, oh, Draven is not outputting as much damage as I thought. Um, oh, probably should have put that Velkaz on the board instead. And, yep, uh, I'm going to lose the round. So, mm, and I saw the Draven to get to 30. But uh, win streak coming to an end. I leveled specifically to try to keep my win streak going, and then it comes to an end. All right, well, out of these options, Ascension might be the right choice here. It's not first aid kit. I also could re-roll as well. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the Tim of Trades. Maybe I can pull and get Laser Core. And I was like, ah, cool. I actually can pull and get Laser Core. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just grab an extra Laser Core. It actually does make it much easier to play six Laser Core. Uh, there are seven Laser Core units. So if you have the emblem, you only need to play five of the normal Laser Core units. And you... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, you can drop one of the weaker ones. Uh, if you don't have this, in order to play six laser core, you either need to run everyone except Mordekaiser, which means running like Ash, who is not a very good unit, uh, or you need to find Mordekaiser in order to get the six in. This means I can run six without running Ash and without running Mordekaiser, which is pretty nice. So this it gives me more options. There's one unit that's very... I've stuck the emblem on Belveth for now. Belveth is probably not the best person to put this on. But uh, it was better than anyone else. It's better than, like, Gangplank, I think, to put it on. At least she does attack relatively quickly and scale up throughout the fight. So Belveth, not the person you really want to put this on. But uh, we'll find a better user for this long term. Ideally, if you can put a Laser Core Emblem on one unit, the, gen the, the unit you usually want to put that on is Echo. Remember what I said before, that if you want to play this trait, it's generally better to put it on tanks. You want to build tanky. Uh, it's a rather... Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have put this on the Blitzcrank. That would have been smarter. Why didn't I just put this on Blitzcrank? Then Blitzcrank, who soaked up damage, would have just been getting the laser core thingy. That would have been smart, because I'm probably going to sell the Blitzcrank eventually anyway. And if I find three-star Blitzcrank, then I'll keep him in. So, yeah. Should have just put this on the Blitz. That would have been better. Anyway, so as I was saying, sometimes I see things when I watch these videos that I didn't see while playing. Uh, as I was saying, so laser core is really a tank trait. Uh, you want to play a very tanky board. Uh, you want to get a very tanky Sejuani, uh, who is, of course, a four-cost laser core with uh, the brawler trait. And uh, just basically have Sejuani soak up damage for as much as possible. Then while Zed runs around killing units in the back line with a uh, hacker trait. So anyway, if you can put the laser core emblem on anyone, the best unit to put it on is typically on Echo. Echo is a unit you'll want to play in this comp because it's going to give you another strong frontliner. And uh, he's also going to give you the prankster trait if you're playing Zoe. And you're going to want to play Zoe because you want to get hacker trait for Zed. So Zed, Zoe, Echo have really strong internal synergy. Uh, like I said, you put the laser core emblem on Echo, and then you just are running like Echo plus Sejuani plus uh, Renekton, and you have a pretty strong front line there. But it's basically not bad to get tank items with this setup. You do, of course, need Zed items as well. But tank items are not really bad with uh, this particular setup. Anyway, here I see that there's an Echo, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that. And I believe that I, I think I actually sell this Echo because I want to get the Chain Vest off him and use it. I can't remember whether I, what I specifically do here. Yeah, I thought that I ended up selling there. Good news is I have found a, oh, you know what it is? But that's why I did want to get that off. I wanted to make an Edge of Night for Zed. Edge of Night is one of his most important items. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move out of the Gangplank. And then if I'm able to get to level 7, I can get the 6 laser core in. So I've been talking a lot about 6 laser core. Why is 6 laser core something desirable? Well, it's a big jump from 3 laser core to 6. 3 laser core, the drones deal 65 magic damage. But at 6, they deal 165 magic damage. 
So 65 to 165, it's almost triple the damage. A little bit short of that. It's about 2.5 times the damage. So that is a very substantial increase. The other thing you have to keep in mind is the laser core drones do kind of scale exponentially in terms of how they function, because for every unit that you have on the board that has the laser core trait, it adds another drone. So like if you have three in and they're all doing 65, you know, that's three times 65. What is that? Like uh, around 200 ish. But if you have six in and they're each doing 165, six times 165, that's almost a thousand. Um, just doing this off the, I might be wrong on that, just doing the math off the top of my head here. So like, that's a very big increase to, to increase, as I said, from, uh, you know, from three times 65 to six times 165. So the drones really do start to add up over time. They're also pretty nice because as the uh, laser core units die, the drones go to the surviving units. So they can actually be very strong long term. Uh, or as fights kind of shake out, it can actually be quite strong. Uh, the, one of the reasons why it might have been better to take Ascension, because this is another cut that kind of scales over the course of the fight. The drones will concentrate on your last units remaining. And uh, it's not unusual to have situations where you're down to like one laser core unit left, but they have like six drones on them. And all of a sudden they just pound out this huge surge of damage that you're not expecting. So as I said, it's a trait that can get stronger over the course of the fight. I do not know 100% for certain that Ascension would increase the drone's damage, but I would believe it does. I guess I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that it does. And you can see how much damage the drones do by highlighting the laser core trait. Uh, the number there sometimes could be a little bit funky, but uh, you can see how much damage they've done by highlighting that. All right, I have found five Blitzcranks so far. It doesn't really look like I'm going to hit Blitz 3-star, but I'll, I'll continue holding for right now. It costs very little money to hold those Blitzes. I have the bench space. Look at my board, though. I'm pretty much all one-star units. Uh, <laughs> I have I hit two-star Blitzcrank, but I have not two-starred anything else. I have a pair of Renektons. I have a pair of Setas. I have a pair of Yasuos, but like I only have one. I only have one Renekton. So yeah, I, I don't really have a lot. I'm not really hitting the laser core units. I'm actually kind of surprised I'm on 86 health. Uh, we did observe that these normal lobbies were maybe not quite as strong as some of the ones that Grillo and I had been playing in for double up purposes. So I was like, all right, pretty sure I'm not going to win these rounds. I did manage to get up to the, the six laser core, but I don't think I'm going to win these rounds. I'm just going to limp to the stage four carousel. Uh, I'll probably be around 50 health at that point. Roll down and see what I can hit. I really need to hit Zed. I would like to hit Mordekaiser, but I don't really think I'm going to hit Mordekaiser. It's not a huge deal. We also do have a, an, uh, we also do have an augment coming up. If there's a possibility that I could get plus one laser core, it would open up the possibility of playing nine laser core, which is extremely strong, but uh, that's unlikely to happen. As I said, there's only seven laser core units, so you need to get double laser core emblems if you want to play uh, laser core nine, and you have to get to level nine or have like a force of nature or tactician's crown, something like that, because you have to play nine units and they all have to be laser core. So that's very hard to do. By the way, this person is only level five, 10 gold. We're like, what is this person doing? But uh, they are actually going to beat me, so... I guess I shouldn't complain too much. All right, here I was like, I don't think I want any of these. Let's reroll and ah, little disappointing. I was not able to get a plus one laser core to look to play nine, but I do get salvage bin. So it's like, uh, it's not cyberletic uplink. That's actually been nerfed really hard. It's not axiom arc. I don't think, I guess it's salvage bin because I do just get a random completed item. And then selling champions breaks apart the items that they're holding. I've never really liked salvage bin. It's been around for a little while. So like if I want, I could, the, if you're curious what this, what the heck this means, I have a static shift here. I can sell this. Like if I were to sell center right now, I would get uh, not a static ship on my bench. I would get a bow and a tier. So like you can make items and then break apart the components and then make other items with it. So that gives you the possibility. It's actually a pretty good roll here to get the static shiv because the item I was trying to make on Zed for his last item was Hurricane. And I actually can do that now because if I sell Senna, the uh, static shiv will turn into a bow and then the bow can combine with the uh, cloak that's on my bench to make Hurricane. Then I'd have the Bloodthirster, Edge of Night, Hurricane. And those are... Pretty good Zed items. This is one problem. Look at this person. This person has apparently gone down to zero gold at level eight, and they have a three-star Renekton, and they have two Zeds. I was like, seriously? Where did you get those two Zeds? You have no money. How did you roll down before me and hit all these Zeds? Like, how did you hit three-star Renekton? Like, these items on your units are not even good items. I don't think this person has any clue what they're doing, but they've actually taken a lot of units out of the pool that I want to play. I was like, ah, geez. Now I'm competing with this person for... Uh, laser core units they're obviously also going straight laser core but 
Uh, and they've basically been hitting. I don't know how they got the three-star Renekton. I guess they rolled it down on level four, but they have like Duelist. Re like what? They have like a weird Duelist Renekton. I don't know what they're doing. It's a very weird setup. Their itemization doesn't make any sense, but they kind of have been hitting the units. Like, look at my board. I still have one star Renekton on my board. I still have one star Yasuo. I still have one star Ash on my board. I was like, what is going on? I'm not hitting these units at all. Uh, I got the early, I guess I do have two star Senna. So that's something. But the problem is I'm going to have to sell Senna as soon as I find Zed. So it's like, I'm going to make that unit because I'm going to need a unit to play through. As unfortunately, I'm up against Phoenix again this round. But like, I do need some unit to deal damage. So I will make the Senna, but I'm probably going to have to sell the Senna to move the items off. Unless they get lucky and find like an item remover. So that's actually not as great as it might sound either. At least I banked an awful lot of health in the early game, so it gives me a little bit of time here to mess around. By the way, that person with the Talon 3-star is still level 5. We're like, what is going on in this game? Definitely see some weird stuff in normals that we do not see when we're in uh, Diamond matchmaking for Double Up, where it's, uh, it's pretty competitive. But um, <laughs> that's part of the fun. That was one of the reasons why the games were entertaining, is because... This is just a much more laid-back situation. All right, well, there is a Zed on the carousel, so I was like, oh, cool, Zed. The glove, I can make something. I can make, like, Hand of Justice on Zed, so that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and grab that Zed and... Ah, seriously? Oh, man. Just getting trolled so hard this game. Uh, so I do really need to find Zed. There is an alternative. If I could find a... Uh, if I could find, like, a Samira, I could look to play into Sure Shot. Like, I could play Senna plus uh, Samira or Senna plus uh, Aphelios. That, so that is a possibility, but there's the Zed. We do actually manage to find the Zed. And there's a replacement Senna, so we'll play that over Ash. And then I like need to figure out what I'm doing. So I'm going to make Zed items. So what do we want to do in terms of Zed itemization? I was thinking of maybe just playing a random uh, Misfortune, because Misfortune actually got super buffed in this patch as well. But then I was like, no, I need to put Zoe on the board because I need to get a uh, Hacker in there. All right, so first of all, I'm going to make Edge of Night. That is Zed's most important item. Then I'm going to make Hurricane. And then I could do, I could potentially do Giant Slayer if I wanted more offense. But I said, no, let's make the Bloodthirster. I do want the shield on him. I do want a little bit more protection on him. So I'm pretty happy with the items he has. Now I have two tiers left over. And again, this is the benefit of Salvage Bin. As I said, this is not my favorite augment, but it does give you a lot of flexibility. Problem is, I tend to get a little bit confused. I get dizzy, as this, the kids like to say. I uh, get a little bit dizzy trying to figure out how to combine all the items together when you sell them and they break apart. But uh, now I can actually use the two tiers for a blue buff, which is one of Zoe's best items. And I'll definitely be playing Zoe because she's going to give me the hacker trait, which I need for Zed. And I'm going to be rolling here. And now I've got some of these leftover items. I have like a leftover Last Whisperer. That could go on Senna, I suppose. And one possibility. I still do have a lot of one stars on my board too. So definitely, uh, I, I, do I think I wait until after the minion round to roll here? I do have the possibility of hitting this other uh, other laser core player. They've actually found a Mordekaiser already. I think they took Mordekaiser off the carousel, which I would have taken as well if that if it was still there. I'm not going to hit them this round. I'm going to hit Talon three star. So this person is still only level six. I don't know quite what they're doing. As I said, I've been very confused by the actions of some of the players in this game. It's not bad itemization for Talon, but Talon is just not that strong of a unit, even as a three-star. So as long as Zed doesn't get focused by Talon early on, we should be okay. Again, this is why Zed has Edge of Night. It's why Edge of Night is his most important item. It's extremely important that he has that aggression drop, so that if he gets focused, the Edge of Night will kick in, and he'll be able to avoid getting focused. So we end up winning that round. And then, oh, 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 there's a Mordekaiser. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll just play that. Okay. And there's also a Leona in the store, too. And I wonder if I maybe should have played the Leona. Like, I could have looked to play Laser Core Leona, and that actually would not have been bad either. Like, just take out Belvath and replace with Leona. But I think ultimately I let the Leona pass here. And I don't know if that was necessarily the right decision. Anyway, I am still looking for another Echo. I got that one Echo off Carousel. I have not seen another one. But uh, Echo would be really nice for my board because with Echo in here, I get. Uh, I get the Prankster trait in, which adds quite a bit of additional frontline for me. And he's just, as I said, a very tanky unit. All right, so we've got another option here. And out of these options, I was like, mm, uh, wow, there's like a lot of different things I can make here. But I was like, I think the play is the Sparring Glove so that I can make a Thief's Glove on Mordekaiser. I think that's the best thing I can do. And then I end up with like a Static Shiv, which is whatever, but uh, that's not bad. Mordekaiser having the Thief's Glove I think is pretty good. All right, so um, look at this, by the way. So when I sell 
Note that when I sell the uh, laser core emblem, it breaks into its two components. This actually confused me for a minute. I was like, oh, I was like, wait a minute, is there a way you can get nine laser core in? And then I was like, no, 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 I can't, like, I can't get nine laser core in. That was the emblem. It broke apart. That was just due to me having the, uh, the salvage bin augment. So note that I will hold the ash though, just in case there's a laser core emblem on one of these future carousels. Uh, that would be nice. I'm actually up against Grillo here, and it's awfully close between the two of us, but can we kill this Talia? Look at all the drones that Senna has. Senna has so many drones. We actually both thought that I was going to win this fight, but then Talia char chose to target the Senna instead of the Zoe. If she had fired at Zoe, I would have won that round. So Grillo wins a very close fight between the two of us. He's got a uh, Star Guardians board there. So, all right. In any case, nope. I'm going to make the Laser Core Emblem again. I actually don't need to play Renekton right now. I already have two Brawlers in with the Blitzcrank. And there's the there's the Echo. So I will move out of the Zack. We'll just put this right back on Zack again. And there's another Echo in the store. So I should play that. And I've got the Sejuani. And oh my god, there's another Mordekaiser. Okay, that's two out of three Mordekaisers. That's pretty good. And I've already hit Sen a two-star, so we don't need that. Unfortunately, I'm not hitting Zed, so that's a little sad. And I guess I should just go ahead and make this static ship. I also should put Mordekaiser a little closer to the front lines. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll just put this on Senna. It wouldn't be bad on Zoe either, but uh, Zoe does not have the laser core trait. By the way, if you get another laser core emblem, the first one you should put on Mordekaiser. But if you get two of them, Zoe is the best target to put the second one on because you want to play Echo and Zoe in this board anyway. By the way, it probably looked like I was going to lose that run, but... Uh, Zed has the aggression drop with Edge of Night. He gets every single laser core drone following him around, and they just do more damage than it would initially look like. So anyway, I am rolling to see mostly if I can hit the Sejuani two star. If I can hit Sedge two star and Z oh, and Zed, I need to hit Zed as well. By the way, there's an Aphelio, so there is that sure shot option, but I'm gonna pass on that. There's another Zed. There's another Leona, by the way. Maybe I really should have played the Leona. All right. So if I could just now, if I could just hit the Zed. Come on, can I find this set? I would really like to. All right, there we go. Thank goodness. All right, now I can stop rolling, and now the play is definitely go to level 9, because at level 9, we can look to play uh, Mordekaiser 2-star. We can look to find another Mordekaiser and have the Mord 2-star. All right, now look at this other person's board here. This is an extremely popular board in this particular patch. So I mentioned that set got buffed really, really hard. And so people are just playing mech set for frontline. And then four aces is also very, very popular. Now, I was actually able to beat that because Zed was able to get in the back lines and kill the Misfortune. But Misfortune was buffed very heavily in this patch. And four aces has now become very, very popular. Now, unfortunately, that other person who's playing the other laser core board is wind streaking right now. And I was like, geez, they're going to get to level nine. They're going to be level nine before me. They're going to continue taking all the units I want to play out of the pool. This is super annoying. But the good news, there's a Mordekaiser on carousel. I was like, ah, look at this person dancing around near the Mordekaiser. Are they just going to take this? Because that's Mordekaiser two star if I can get it. And the death blade will pop off. All right. Fortunately, they didn't take it. I don't know what they were doing, dancing around the Mordekaiser, but uh, they didn't take it. So that's more two-star. That's awesome. Deathblade pops off. Now I can go on a more useful unit. I'll just put it on Senna because out of all the units I have, she's kind of the only one that deals AD. So let's go ahead and stick that on her. I could break it apart into two swords, but I don't have any use for doing that right now. But uh, yeah, I do actually have uh, some additional swords here. And I'm now slated to be up against either Grillo or my Doppelganger. Unfortunately, they're level 9. Uh, the good news is their Zed is horribly itemized. Zed's items make no sense over there on the board that they're playing. So I'm going to try to... I'm going to assume that I'm up against them. But it turns out I'm actually up against Grillo. So I guessed incorrectly on who I was going to be up against. But I placed the Zephyr to try and hit their uh, Zed over there. So now the question is, can my Zed kill the backline here? Or will he get just get popped by the Talia? Big difference is I now have Mordekaiser 2-star. Mordekaiser got buffed in this patch. Mordekaiser got a lot stronger in this one. So it looks like I beat Grillo's Ghost very easily. But of course, Grillo was not positioning for me in that round. Although, to be fair, I wasn't positioning for him either. Now, it looks like we're going to be down to just four players here. Because one of the players just got knocked out. So it's Grillo and me. And then it's this person who's playing the super annoying <laughs> laser core board. At least I'm going to hit two-star echo there. Uh, and it looks like I'm up against Grillo here. So uh, one of us is going to have to take the loss. The good news is Mordekaiser's rolled insanely good items this time around. He has a chalice, which I don't really care about, but the death cap. Death cap means he's going to hit insanely hard. Mordekaiser, uh, if you're unfamiliar with his ability, he is a legendary unit in this set. He has the ace trait, so he'll execute units under 15% health. 
And uh, he basically drops a building that shreds the magic resistance of everybody that gets hit. It is a 50% magic resistant shred. He is a very important unit to play on a laser core board. You want to get him if at all possible, not just because he's a 5 plus unit, but also because he shreds the magic resistance of the whole enemy team. Remember, the drones deal magic damage. So, you know, the, he will increase the damage that all the drones do. All right, there's the building cross. Oof, that was a lot of damage, an awful lot of damage. So even though Mordekaiser's pathfinding was pretty terrible in that fight, he, like, walked completely around the battlefield. Grillo got pretty unlucky in terms of what items uh, he rolled on his, on his uh, yeah, uh, what items he rolled on his Thief's Glove. And, uh, oh, look at that. The uh, My doppelganger, the other laser core player, finally lost a round. Excellent, excellent. That's what we want to see. I have not actually matched up against them in a while. I'm hoping I can win the, the mirror match. This time, Mordekaiser's rolled tank items, which is pretty hilarious. All right, so I'm just trying to go to level 9. At level 9, I can just probably toss another random legendary unit. Like, I'm going to grab this Zack. It could be Zack. Probably not that useful, but uh, we'll see what it is. I mean, probably the most useful would be Leona. The other alternative would be Fiddlesticks, just because the designers buff Fiddlesticks really hard in this patch. And Fiddlesticks is now stupidly overpowered, so you should just always play him if you ever get him. Like, it doesn't matter the team cop. You should basically play Fiddlesticks. So I would also look to play that. But I, I, I've kind of two-starred my whole board, so there's no pur purpose other than going to level 9. There are some decent options here, like uh, uh, the Giant Slayer would not be terrible for Senna, but I'm not really playing through Senna. So I was like, let's just take the generic option of a Shot of Stillness. That's going to be useful against Grillo's board. Again, we're having fun here, but we are still trying to win, still trying to make a good faith effort to win. And uh, oh, I am finally going to move out of the Blitz Crank. I thought about when to do this. Since it was clear I was not going to hit Blitz 3-star, I'll just move out of that. I put the Renekton on the board just to maintain the uh, laser, just to maintain the Brawler trait. And the Renekton actually is someone I can now put the Shroud of Stillness on because I can move him wherever. It doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm going to look to move the Zed over to the right-hand side. And I move him over here. And I was like, wait, what? 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 What happened to Zed? Why didn't he move? Well... This is due to the way that the hacker room works. I actually get a perfect shot of stillness, but Zed is not in the back lines. Zed is hitting the set mech. That is not what I need. And look, we're going to get the misfortune super low, but oh, Mordekaiser throws his building at nothing. Does not hit the back line. I should have won this round, but I end up losing it because of positioning. Super annoying. So what happened there is I moved the hacker room at the last second. If you move the hacker room, the unit attached to it moves. But if you move the hacker room onto another unit that's already there, it just changes which unit is getting sent into the back lines. Like, look, watch. That moves Zed, that moves Zed, that moves Zed. But if I move right there, it doesn't move Zed. It just switches the target. I was like, Jesus, that's confusing. Why does it work like that? So, yeah, that's the first time I came in contact with that particular mechanic. And unfortunately, it caused me to lose a round. I almost certainly would have won. As I said, that person did not dodge my Shroud of Stillness. I got a perfect Shroud, but unfortunately, Zed did not move the way I wanted to, and so I lost that round. So now we need to look to try to get revenge against my Doppelganger here. Again, I do not think this board is very well constructed. Zed does not have good items at all. I mean, I guess they're passable, but they're certainly not good. And the Renekton has fallen off pretty hard by this point in time. So anyway, I go in the back lines. Zed is going to kill the Velkaz that they've got back there. And this is not really a very close fight. We're going to win pretty easily and finish off. Well, not finish off that player, but deal some damage. <clears throat> now, in this fight, I'm rooting for Grillo. I'm hoping that he can win, but he was not able to get through the set mech, unfortunately. And so now I'm going to be up against him because it's around. When there's four people in the lobby, it's around Robin. So now I'm going to look to have to try to position for him. Grillo, of course, is going to try to position for me as well. He is going to do his best. So he knows I'm playing Zed. Zed has the hacker trait. Zed's going to go in the back line. So he knows that he needs to try to put his Talia in a box in the corner. It's the only way to keep this unit safe. I have a uh, Zephyr on my Mordekaiser for this particular round. So I'm going to try to use this. I do make one mistake, though. I forget to move my Shroud of Stillness. That's actually a huge mistake. Grillo's board is completely clumped up. If I just remember to move the uh, the uh, Shroud of Stillness over there to the left, this would be a very, very easy win because Shroud really wrecks his Star Guardian's comp. So it's going to be a much closer fight. Mordekaiser gets off the big ult. Unfortunately, my Zephyr ended up hitting the uh, the Syndra on his team, not the Talias. So this is very close, but oof. My Zed just barely clutches that out. And that was bad positioning by me. So unfortunately, I knock out Grillo. I wish I had not knocked out Grillo. I would have much preferred 
that the two of us could have maybe top two in this lobby, but nope, not going to happen. And then here I was like, uh, I don't want another Shroud of Stillness. I was like, is it the Thief's Glove? Maybe, but nope. Round actually times out really fast, faster than I thought. I ended up getting the Duelist Emblem. I was like, ah, well, that's not very useful. I can't really do anything with this Duelist Emblem. So now I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just going to roll here. Just put like another legendary unit on the board. Unfortunately, this other board is really, really wind streaking at this point in time because they've got the four aces going. So I was like, I think Leona's probably the best unit I can play. Can I find the two star Leona? That would be pretty good. Fiddlesticks would also not be bad. Oh, I actually can get the two star Leona. I was like, okay, so I'll look to play that. Now I want to get the shot of Stonus. I need to get Zed position to jump into the back lines. And do I have enough to beat this board? Oh, they moved their misfortune. That is unfortunate. I need the Shroud to hit MF. I need Zed to be on MF. MF is insanely strong in these uh, four aces boards after getting buffed. And Mord, Mordekaiser, you missed the misfortune. If you hit misfortune, we win the fight. But no, you missed the misfortune. Zed is stuck on the set mech. So, I mean, it's close. But do we have quite enough to finish this? No. No, we don't. So I was like, ah, man. But uh, it turns out, remember, I have a spatula on my bench. And Grillo and uh, Phoenix, who are still watching this, were like, wait a minute. If you sell the Senna, you can make another Laser Core emblem. You can play nine Laser Core. I was like, oh, my God. You guys are right. I can play nine Laser Core. So I was like, all right. Uh, can I get this in? I was like, I have to take Zoe out. But wait, I'm missing a unit. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now I need to try to reposition. I actually have the nine Laser Core in, which is ridiculously strong. But can I try to get these items on? I was like, uh... Uh, okay, well, I'm getting full locket value here. What do I do with these other items? It's like, uh, two-star Leona. Okay, let's just put items on Leona. Okay, so uh, Shojin and uh, Leona here have a blue buff, so you'll cast more frequently. Senna, here's a rapid-fire cannon. And so Leona is actually doing a ton of damage. She's putting her ult down. She actually killed the set mech with it. And boom, we just punch right through the whole team. Bam! And just like that, it's a victory for nine laser core. Yeah, nine laser core, super duper strong. So the salvage bin came in unbelievably clutch at the end of the game. Um, so I didn't really get time to talk about it, but uh, the nine laser core is the drones go up to 200 magic damage and every agent gets a second drone. So you actually have 18 drones that each deal 200 magic damage. It's totally insane. <clears throat> anyway, well... I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. This was a fun way to test out this new patch. Thank you, Grillo. Thank you, Phoenix, for joining me. Thanks especially for the tips at the end of the game. Anyway, until next time, take care, folks. See you soon.